Hello, New Century Church. I'm Greg Smith. I'm one of the elders. Uh, recently, I had the privilege of going through the book of Exodus with a Sunday school class, um, and we didn't get to the last lesson, and I thought that I would share that with you today, as a, hopefully as a word of encouragement. Um, so I, I went through the book of Exodus, and we were studying who is God, um, basically God being introduced to the people of Israel. Um, now, they knew of of Yahweh. They knew who God was through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that sort of thing. But there was no personal relationship. And really the book of Exodus is that um, it, it, it's it's God making himself a presence in their midst. And so when we go through that, a lot of times uh, we think about in the book of Exodus uh, some of the highlights like the plagues of Egypt and um, the Ten Commandments, uh, the golden calf, uh, Moses going and seeing the glory of God in the cleft of the rock. Um, well, there was there's a, a, a brief chapter in between um, Moses going to the cleft of the rock and the, the people bowing down to the golden calf. And that was going to be my last lesson that I didn't get to share that, that I wanted to share with you today. Um, so that chapter is the chapter where God says, um, I'm not going to go with you to the promised land uh, because of what you've done with the golden calf. I, I don't want to go with you because I'm going to destroy you. Uh, so let's, let's read it in Exodus chapter 33. It says, The Lord says to Moses, Depart, go up from here, you and the people from whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, saying, To your offspring I will give it. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites and the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go among you, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff-necked people. And when the people heard this disastrous word, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. So in this passage, what we've got is God is going to the people um, directly after they bowed down to the golden calf. Uh, now, the golden calf was about three months or so after they had left the land of Egypt. So you've got all of these huge events in Exodus happening from the, the plagues, uh, the Red Sea um, being split in half, uh, you know, all of these things happening in, in, in a short period of time. And then the golden calf, the Ten Commandments. And then we get to this chapter here and God says to the people, I'm not going to go with you, but I'm going to send an angel ahead of me. Or ahead of you and he's going to clear out the land he's going to take out all your enemies he's going to make your your way easy so that all you have to do is enter the land like i promised i, I was going to do um, and the people said this is a disastrous word we can't we can't do this we've got to have your presence and my question is if we had that same deal today if god came to us and said if i give you assurance of good health that um, you don't have to worry about job security, that the, that the job situation in the middle of this pandemic is, is shored up, that um, you don't have to worry about anything financial or any, any money uh, issues that, that might be going on. If I, if I give you everything that, that you could possibly need to do the things uh, that you need to do or you want to do, um, but I'm not going to go with you, would we take that deal? The people of Israel didn't. Uh, they mourned, they they um, fasted, and and they wept, uh, and they said, "No, we got, we have to have your presence, God." And Moses went and interceded before them uh, to the Lord and said, "We need your presence." And and would we do the same thing if we were offered whatever it is that that is on your wish list or that uh, you feel is is a need? If we were offered that with 100% certainty, but we would not have God's presence, would we take it? Um, I, I trust that we would be like the people of Israel and, and say, no, God, we want your presence. And, and you have to remember the people of Israel, This is they've only been in the wilderness for three months. And they said, God, you've offered us to, to usher us into to the land of promise, but we'll take the wilderness as long as we have your presence. Um, I hope that we would make the same decision. Uh, I hope this is encouragement. Again, Exodus chapter 33, check it out. There's a lot of uh, good stuff in there. Um, and I'll see you guys soon.